you made our hearts happy today just by showing up we got listen people drove in from california today y'all believe that <laughs> no they didn't drive in today but there are people here from california from indiana from houston from all over everywhere we just praise god for you being here and we truly hope you enjoy the service and we truly hope you have a strong strong undeniable uh, desire to come back to see us but if you don't that's between you and god it's none of our business. If God leads you here, then come on. If he don't, get on back. We don't want you. All right? <laughs> right, Brother Jerry? We want well, who God wants, right? We need you. We need you. We want you. Not trying to say that. We want you, but that's between you and God. Hey, thank you for being here. I didn't need to shut up. <laughs> Miss Brittany's going to come and sing this morning. What a beautiful name. And I'm going to attempt to sing till the storm passes by. Not according to our works, but according to his own purpose and grace, which was given to us in Jesus Christ before the world began, but now is made manifested by the appearing of our Savior, Jesus Christ, who hath abolished death and hath brought life and immortality to light through the gospel.
What a powerful name it is And nothing compares to Him And what a powerful name it is The name of Jesus What a wonderful name it is The name of Jesus I had rather worship at the name of Jesus than any other name in the world. I love America today, but I do not love what she's become. God's churches and God's people and American standards is on the attack today. And we're in a warfare. And uh, I don't know what the outcome's going to be except one of these days I'm going to be in glory. I mean, I don't care what the rest of them does. I do care, yeah. I don't. <laughs> Thanks, bud. For those who don't know, this is my brother back here. He's the one that's messing up song service and getting on to me for saying that. No, but uh, we're in a warfare. Sometimes the storm gets heavy. The name of this song is Till the Storm Passes By. I hope it's a blessing to you. the dark of the midnight I so often hide my face while the storms howl above me there seems to be no hiding place mid the crash of the thunder precious Lord Hear my cry, keep me safe Till the storm passes by Till the storm passes over Till the thunder sounds no more Till the clouds roll forever from the sky Hold me fast Let me stand In the hollow Of thy hand Keep me safe Till the storm Passes Many times Satan whispers, he says, you see, there's no need to try, for there's no end of sorrow, there's no hope in the by and by, but I know thou art with me, and tomorrow is over till the thunder sounds no more till the clouds go forever from the sky hold me fast let me stand in the hollow of thy hand keep me 
sing till the storm passes by. Well, it's good to be here today, isn't it? Amen. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I hope our visitors know they're welcome today. Because they are. You are. So good to have you with us. and Good to see our members today. Uh, we got some that have uh, staying in today because of the COVID, because the numbers have gone back up. But... Uh, most everybody's here, and so we praise the Lord for that. Oh, I tell you, you talk about storms. We're having one in this country, aren't we? Yeah. Did you hear what happened in a, in, a, in a small town? I don't know how many people were in it, but just, just yesterday or day before, the uh, Antifa people came in, and uh, they, they, everybody knew they was going to be there. Well... The town just showed up with all their AR-15s and <laughs> everybody riding around in pickup trucks. And, and you know what? They didn't have a bad ride. They were there just to make sure it didn't, things didn't go wrong. But, uh, you know, uh, we do have a citizen militia in this country, and uh, once in a while she's going to show herself. But what storms we have going on in our world today. But you know what? You heard that old song, we sing it once in a while, This World is Not My Home. I'm going somewhere else one of these days, and I hope it's when Jesus comes back again. And I hope that'll be soon. I, I pray sometimes, Lord Jesus, come quickly. Because, uh, you know, uh, that's the only answer for us in this troubled world, is to remove us from this world, and then, oh, it's not going to be pleasant here at all after that. Tonight, uh, this morning, I, I normally uh, have been bringing a uh, series of messages about Daniel, uh, but I felt impressed this morning to do something different. We did something different last Sunday with the Father's Day message, but uh, this morning I, I felt impressed again to do something different, and uh, I want to preach to you about heaven, my home. We sang that song about the old rugged cross. In that third verse, it talks about someday he's going to take us home. Heaven is my home. I've never been there yet. I've been in services that felt like I was there. And I've had experiences with the Lord where it felt like I was there. But I, I've never been there yet. I can't even begin to imagine the things that God's prepared for those of us that know him and those of us that love him. He's a good God. He loves us. He knows what's going on in this world. He knows where we are. He knows how to protect us and take care of us, and uh, he's really good to us. And uh, we're going to start out this morning in the book of John chapter 14. John chapter 14, but before we read this, let's go to the Lord in a word of prayer. Our gracious Father, thank you so much for your blessings on us today, for the privilege to be here, and for everybody that's gathered here this morning, especially those that are visiting with us. We just pray that everybody here today will receive a great blessing from this service. Help me, Lord, to do a good job in bringing your message today. Father, I pray that if there's somebody here in our services this morning that not prepared to go to heaven, that this would be the day that they would realize their sinful and lost condition and come to you and become a believer in you and trust you as their Lord and Savior. We ask you, Lord, to bless our prayer requests. We know that there are several things on our prayer list. We pray that you'll help each burden and each person according to your will. 
Help me, Father, again, I pray as I try to bring this message. Give me freedom to, to present the things, Lord, that you would have presented here today. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. We are living in troubled times. Oftentimes our minds are troubled in these days in which we live. Jesus and his disciples were living in some troubled times. Look what he said here in John chapter 14. He said, Let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself that where I am, there ye may be also. We sung the song, Standing on the Promises, this morning. This is one of those promises. The Lord said he's preparing a place for us. He said he's going to come back for us and receive us unto himself, and that we will be with him then forever. What a promise. What a precious promise, especially in the troubled times in which we live. While we are here upon this earth, we may from time to time experience great heavenly joy and peace in our hearts. All that while we are walking with the Savior from day unto day. But we are not destined to live here forever. This is not our home. We are bound for a heavenly home. John, you just changed those because I forgot that little clicker this morning, okay? Oh, I'm not there yet. I'm not there yet. I'll tell you, okay? Oh, they decide they want to bring it to me because they don't want me to embarrass them anymore. <laughs> Thank you, brother. Brother Isaac. Thank you, sir. Okay, probably the reason Sean and I were not quite prepared, mostly me, he said, do you have a PowerPoint this morning? I said, I have three of them. He said, what? which one? So I told him which one. But, uh, I, you know, I didn't know what the Lord wanted me to do today, and so I have three sermons prepared for today, and if you'll sit and listen, I'll preach them all. If you come back and listen, I'll preach another one maybe. All right. All right. We're bound for a home that is on the other side. The Bible really doesn't tell us a whole lot about heaven. But uh, just enough so that when we talk about heaven, our hearts get thrilled. As we think of the bliss and we think of the glory that is shared by everybody whose home that will be. Shortly before Jesus went to the cross, he gave his apostles and as well to us this wonderful promise found here in our scripture reading this morning. And it is upon this promise that we base our confidence in our heavenly home. I hope you can say that heaven is your home. Did you know that every child of God should be encouraged? about the subject of heaven. First of all, because if we're saved, we are most surely going to this place called heaven. Everybody that's been born again, been washed in the blood of the Lamb, put their faith and trust in Jesus Christ, is bound for this place called heaven. I'm going one day. You're saved, you're going Someday, our names are on the rolls of the citizenship there in heaven. Many of our friends and many of our loved ones, many people and saints that we don't even know are already living there in heaven. You know, it's natural that we should want to know something about the country to which we are traveling. 
That place where we will live forever with our Lord. That place where we will be in the company of the redeemed. We should uh, be encouraged by the subject of heaven because if you're saved, you're most surely going there. Secondly, all of us have loved ones there. This young man is sitting up here visiting with us today. His name is Howard. When I met him a while ago, I said, you know, that was my dad's name. I said, he's in glory, but that was his name. And I don't think I'll ever have a problem remembering Howard's name. You know, the very mention of heaven reminds us of some people we know that are there right now. Some saints that we've said goodbye to. Maybe it's a loving father. Maybe it's the sweetest mother. Possibly it's even a child. Possibly it's our best friend. Possibly it's our grandmother, grandfather. All of us have people on the other side, and we're looking forward to seeing them again. I know a lot of preachers from days gone by. This man sitting right here on the, on the front, Brother Larry Hawkins. We've known each other for about mm, all our lives almost. At least some 50-something years. Both our dads were preachers. Both of them were old, what I call corn-shucking preachers. And both of them would preach so long that you'd think they're never going to get through. <laughs> I didn't take after them, aren't you glad? <laughs> But you know what? One of these days, we're going to see those dads again. We're going to see the husband or the wife or that one that we love so much that went on ahead of us to that new home in heaven. We've got loved ones there. The saints of all the ages are there. My Father, God, is there. My Lord Jesus Christ is there. Those patriots that I so respect and love from the Old Testament, they're there. All those people that are mentioned in Hebrews chapter 11, those heroes of the faith, they're there. The apostles are there. Paul and Peter and John and all those guys are there. Stephen is there. Listen, we've heard these glorious stories. We've heard about Daniel. We've heard about the three Hebrew children. All those folks are over there on the other side. And one day it'll be our joy to meet them and to get to know them. There's another reason that the subject of heaven ought to encourage us. And it's because it's our Lord's prescribed cure for a troubled heart. See how this chapter begins? Let not your heart be troubled. Believe in God, believe also in me. And then he began to tell him about heaven. Hmm. The Lord doesn't want us to be so troubled by all the things that are going on in this world, but to look upward. Sometimes we get so troubled, we get so perplexed, we get so burdened down. It's good then to take our thoughts and move them toward heaven. You know, I think we would more than likely be happier Christians and healthier Christians if we spent more time thinking about the joys that's going to be on the other side, especially when we compare heaven to this current world in which we live. Heaven is a land that is brighter than day. I don't know if you can imagine that or not. Heaven is the place of our hopes and our dreams. Heaven is the place that we look forward to it, spending eternity in a place where there's no sorrow, no heartache, no trouble, no riots, just peace, just tranquility, just opportunity after opportunity to praise the Lord, to sit with the Lord and to hear Him speak, to worship Him there. The Lord tells us in these verses, our scripture reading this morning, of three simple facts about heaven. He said, in my father's house are many mansions. He said, I go to prepare a place for you. 
And he said, I will come again and receive you, that where I am, there you may be also. Three things that he said to us that are wonderful in that verse. Let me talk to you about heaven this morning. First of all, heaven is a real place. It's not a figment of somebody's imagination. It's not something that songwriters just write about. Heaven is a real place. It's got a locality, just like New York City, just like Dallas, Texas, just like London, England, and Paris, France, just like hell. <laughs> hell has a location also. Jesus said in Revelation 1 and 18, he said, I am he that liveth and was dead, and behold, I am alive forevermore. Amen. And listen, listen to what else he said. And have the keys of hell and death. The Lord's got the keys to the cities of heaven and hell. That place that he described as my father's house in which are many mansions. That's where he's preparing a place for us. Now get that. The Lord himself is preparing a place for us. Now, he's been gone some over 2,000 years. He created the heavens and the earth in just six days. What do you think heaven's going to be like? That's why he said, I have not seen, ear hath not heard, neither hath it entered into the heart of man the things that God hath prepared for those that love him. Listen, Jesus said it. I'm going to prepare a place for you where my, in my father's house where there are many mansions. Now listen, he didn't say he was going to prepare us a mansion. Whatever he prepares for us will be totally acceptable and appreciated by all of us. I don't know what it's going to be like. You know, the, some of the songs books used to uh, contain an old song that says, I'm camping in glory land. <laughs> I'm camping, I'm camp. I can't sing it. I shouldn't have tried. But it talks about camping in glory land. And I, I was uh, at a church one day to preach, and uh, I, I was just a visitor there. And... Uh, this Sunday school got up, Sunday school teacher got up and began to talk about that song. He said, I don't want no camping spot in heaven. I want a mansion, he said. But you know, the Bible doesn't promise us a mansion. But Jesus will be there and everything will be okay. You know what? If you just got a room in a motel up there, it's better than anything you could find here. Amen. Listen, heaven is a real place. Where is heaven? We all have an idea where it is. Acts chapter 1, verse 9 through 11. And when he had spoken these things, while they beheld, he was taken up, and a cloud received him out of their sight. And they looked steadfastly toward heaven as he went up. So we know heaven is up there. Behold, two men stood by them in white apparel, which also said, Ye men of Galilee, why stand ye gazing up into heaven? The same Jesus, which is taken up from you into heaven, taken up, so shall come in like manner as ye have seen him go into heaven. He went up, one day he's coming down. He's going to stop in the air. Before that happens, we're going to hear the trump, we're going to hear his shout. Before he gets stopped in the air, we're going to already be up there with him. <laughs> it's all going to come together at the same time, and I can't explain it, and I can't fully express it, but heaven is up there. Where did Stephen look whenever they were stoning him to death? He looked steadfastly into heaven and saw the glory of God and Jesus standing at the right hand of the Father. He saw him up there. I've never seen that. I've never looked up and saw into heaven. Whew. 
You'd have a hard time tying me down if I ever did that. Uh, boy, I tell you what, it would add a new dimension to my preaching. I believe that. If I were to be like Stephen and I looked up and saw Jesus standing, I saw the glory of God in heaven and I saw Jesus standing there by the Father. <laughs> That'd be a marvelous sight and only one person that I know of has ever seen it. And that's Stephen. Heaven's a place of eternal joy and blessedness. The Bible talks about that. The glories and the beauties of heaven. But did you know heaven's also beautiful because of what will not be there? No sin, no sorrow, no death, no mourning, no night, no separation, no tears, no war. Nothing that will mar or spoil the joys of heaven. Heaven is a place where we're going to be with Jesus. He's with us now. He promised that. Lo, I am with you always, even to the end of the world, he said. So he's with us now. But then we shall be with him literally and continually. Heaven would not be heaven without the presence of Jesus. Heaven's a place of wonderful reunions. That's our sure confidence that when we say goodbye to our brothers and sisters in Christ that we shall meet them again someday. You know, when we gather at the grave of someone that we love and care about, we're not saying goodbye. If they know Jesus as their Savior and we know Jesus as our Savior, we're saying, I, I'll see you a little later on down the road. I'll see you a little bit later on. It's a place of joyful service. And Revelation tells us that his servants shall serve him. When, it, when the Bible talks about servants serving the Lord, it's talking about them doing it joyfully. It's talking about them doing it gladly. What a joy to serve the Lord. The greatest thing that we can do in this life is give our lives over to serving the Lord Jesus Christ. Heaven is a real place. Heaven is a prepared place. Now, we've already talked about that a little bit. Jesus said it. I go to prepare you a place. We've talked about that verse where our eyes and our hearts and our minds cannot even begin to figure out the beauties of heaven. It's a place where Jesus wants us to be with him forever. He said in John 17 and 24, Father, I will that they also whom thou hast given me be with me where I am. It's the Lord's will that one day we join him in that place called heaven. That place where we shall ever be with the Lord. I don't know if you've ever thought about how much the Lord talks about how he has prepared so many things. I read in the scriptures that he led Noah to prepare an ark to the saving of his household, to the saving of all men. I read where he had prepared a great fish to swallow up Jonah when Jonah was being so disobedient and running away from him. I read in Matthew chapter 25 and 41 that where Jesus said, Depart from me, ye cursed, into everlasting fire, and listen to this, prepared for the devil and his angel. Angels. Heaven is a prepared place for every true believer. And hell is a prepared place for every true unsaved soul. It's a prepared place for a prepared people. You got to be prepared to go to heaven. Jesus said, I go there to prepare a place for you. He was talking to men who were prepared. 
He was talking to men who knew him as their Lord and Savior. He was talking to those who believed on him and trusted in what he was about to do, his shedding of his blood to save us from sin. He said further in verse 6, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. Now, I want you to look at what I'm trying to say this morning. Heaven is real. Jesus is preparing it for his children, a place for us. That means if we're going there, we've got to be prepared by knowing him as our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Now, here's the thing this morning that we need to take with us today. Contrary to the belief of so many people in this world, everybody's not going to heaven. Some old sorry man that's been a drunkard and a wife beater, been mean to his kids, he can die and his family will talk about seeing him again in heaven. <laughs> that's the mentality that we have. Everybody's going to go to heaven. It don't matter if you've been bad. God's so good that he's going to make up for that and you're going to get to go to heaven. God just telling us all these things so that as many of us can, we'll get on his side. But we're all going to make it in the end. That's not what the Bible says. Everybody is not going to dwell in heaven. Heaven is our home for those that are saved. Those that know Jesus as their Savior. I hope everybody here today, you know Jesus as your Savior. I hope you've come to the point in your life that you agree with what God says about us. There's none righteous, no, not one. That all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. And that the wages of sin is death. And it's talking about eternal spiritual death. It says, but the gift of God is eternal life. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. And Jesus said almost that very thing, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. I'd ask you a question this morning. Are you in the company of the redeemed? Are you headed to heaven? Look down in your heart of hearts where no one can go except you. If you don't find the Spirit of God there, letting you know that everything's okay between you and God, then it's likely you've never been saved yet. The good thing is you can be saved this morning. You can trust Jesus even here in this service this morning. What do I have to do, preacher? Do I have to come forward? No. But you've got to take your place as a sinner before God, admitting what you are, and believing on what Jesus did on the old rugged cross when he shed his blood for us, believing in him to save us. Unless you realize you're a sinner, and you realize that Jesus is the only Savior, and you put your trust in Him, you will not be saved. And it's not something that we do with our minds. It's something that we do with our beings. Something that we do with our hearts. And I'm not talking about this pump inside our chest. I'm talking about that inner man, the real you has to put your faith and trust in Jesus Christ. And when you do, oh, when you do, you will experience what I experienced. You will experience what so many sitting in this room and in the other room over there this morning. You will experience what we've all experienced. When burdens were lifted, the condemnation was gone. 
And we knew everything was okay between us and God. And there was peace and joy that replaced the fear and the agony. Replaced the jeopardy that we felt like we were in without God. I've been there. I know what I'm talking about. All these people here that are saved, they can tell you the same thing. They know exactly what I'm talking about. If you've never come to grips with the fact that you're a lost sinner, never put your faith and trust in Jesus Christ. Now, I didn't say never been baptized. It has nothing to do with it. I didn't say never been a member of the church. It has nothing to do with it. With the heart man believeth unto righteousness, but the mouth confession is made unto salvation. It's a thing of your heart. It's not saying words after a preacher. <laughs> it's not taking a preacher by the hand and saying, Lord, be merciful to me, a sinner. Now, I'm not saying people can't get saved by doing that. But I am saying the only way they get saved is when their heart does that. Not because some preacher says, take my hand and repeat these words. Brother Paul Rose used to be a member of this church, missionary, in uh, Peru. And uh, when he was in Bible school, I've told this to our church before, but I'm going to tell it again this morning. He said that every Saturday they had a quota they had so many people that they had to go out and win to Christ. And that's the way they did it. You want to be saved? Well, who doesn't want to be saved? Yes, I want to be saved. Well, take my hand and repeat these words. He told me, he said, there's no telling how many people went to hell because of what I did. You see, it's not repeating a few words. It's a transaction that goes on between you and God in your heart. Amen. Have you made that transaction? Is heaven your home? Can you say heaven is my home? I know it's real. I know Jesus is preparing it. And I know I'm prepared because I've trusted the blood. Brother Dale sings a song sometimes. I love it. I'm trusting the blood. Amen. Have you trusted in the blood that was shed on Calvary? To save you. Brother Dale, come. Let's sing a song. If you're here this morning and uh, God's spoken to your heart. One thing we don't see in churches a lot anymore is people getting saved. Wouldn't it be great this morning if somebody's lost here in this service and they came to the realization of that and they trusted in Jesus to save them? You don't have to come forward. But I request of you, if Jesus saves you right there in your seat this morning, whether you're in this auditorium or whether you're over in the fellowship hall, come forward and let us know about it so that we can rejoice with you, so that we can let you know how wonderfully proud we are of what you've done for Christ this morning. What number are we singing? Or what song are we singing, Brother Dale? Wherever, Wherever he leads, I'll go. I hope we'll all do that this morning.